In this video, I'm going to give you my commentary and views as to why I am short Bitcoin right now. So we'll start off with the Bitcoin chart, of course, and this is my count for Bitcoin. I believe that it's in a wave D zigzag mega expanded corrective pattern. Now this is taken into consideration a lot of the altcoins. Now, a lot of people seem to think that, um, you know, Bitcoin drives price action in the crypto market. Well, altcoins do produce similar patterns to Bitcoin. That I can agree with. But it's not always exactly the same. And I also believe that the opposite is true. During bear markets, altcoins affect Bitcoin. Right? You can't have one without the other. You just can't. Maybe you could before, but not now. So I think that Obviously, with a lot of the scandals that happened, this was kind of proven true when Bitcoin fell from its all-time high. And a lot of the things that happened in the crypto space did affect Bitcoin. Whether you, whether you like to believe it or not, it will have happened, right? So my perspective here is that there's also another factor that can play a big role and that's a recession, right? A recession, I believe is coming this year and it's gonna drive prices lower once again before we get our mega pump to, you know, higher levels. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin goes above 100,000. I wouldn't be surprised. But the thing is that that has a big, role in how these markets operate due to the fear factor, right? You saw what happened in March, 2020, right? And this next one will be just as severe or if not, maybe slightly worse, but this is not what I thought it was going to be. And I'll talk about that by switching to the, the Dow Jones chart. I've updated my view on this one. I believe that you know, I, I take evid like clues from cryptos and transfer them back and forth between the markets and crypto. Now, I do believe that what we're seeing here in the Dow Jones is the end of a D wave, right? Uh, wave four will end. And wave four, when it ends, we're going to see that pump that's going to drive cryptos to the next stage of its bubble market before a depression occurs. Now, when you're looking at the Dow Jones, in my opinion, we're in a wave four right now, okay? A major wave four. So wouldn't be surprised if that one comes back down to the previous wave four of wave three, All right? So it's gonna be down on the Dow Jones to about 15, thousand and then we're going to get a, another one more high so that one more high i believe is going to be that move that drives bitcoin above a hundred thousand temporarily before we get a five wave move down in a larger de pattern potentially a b wave correction I believe it's part of a larger zigzag or a larger corrective pattern um, that is unfolding. And, you know, I believe it's good to be a few steps ahead of the market, but then really put in a lot of effort to try and figure out the short term. The long term is one I've focused on a lot and I've sort of now come to the conclusion that we'll have a recession before a depression. A recession, an all-time high for wave five, which is the same length as wave one back in basically the 60s, right? That wave one will be maybe, you know, at least, it'll be at least that length. So if it's not, well, it has a little bit more ground to cover because of the bubble created. 
And that's the thing that um, I believe will happen is because this correction is expanded a lot and basically it, it, it will need to climb higher to reach the all time high. But we don't know 100% if that's going to be the case. And it may not even be that bad due to its expansion. It might just fall a certain amount, you know, not even back down towards that level. It could, it absolutely could. Um, and you know what? It might make sense because it'll be slightly longer than the COVID crash. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back down to 15,000. And then another pump in crypto that'll be the completed wave D, which funny enough lines up with a larger wave D and then a wave E five wave move down, which also lines up with the crypto market, right? Before we get a massive bull market, like a much bigger one than, than what we've seen. So these sub, these things keep subdividing in the stock market, but in terms of crypto, you know, where, where does it end? Right. And that's the thing, like, we don't know, we, we really don't know. And we, we will find out eventually, but for now, my game plan is, uh, crypto's falling, take a short position, wait for the recession to complete, buy up your favorite cryptos, whichever they may be. Solana is a good one. Um, and then wait for that pump to take profit off the table and then wait for a massive dump, right? And then reinvest your profits. That's, that's my game plan, right? So if we go back to, let, let's have a look at Solana for a moment, just so we can line this up, right? Now Solana uh, came out at an interesting time, right? Now this one is not as obvious, but I do believe it explains a little bit about the correction up above. It's had, it's, it's kind of pulled a different correction, a small A, B, C, D, a D pattern up here, followed by an E. Why, why would I say that is because, um, in terms of symmetry, right? These patterns that look like zigzags tend to be traded like zigzags. And when something has a five wave move followed by a, some kind of pullback, be it a zigzag or otherwise, uh, it gets traded by institutional traders. Um, and you know, it's, it's a lot of confluence in that area. And if we're looking at a recession, then that would definitely be possible. Uh, for Solana to come back to $5 maybe. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be a zigzag looking pattern, which is an A, B, C, D, E, rather than a straight out zigzag. Why? Because you can see a, a five wave move here and then a two, three, four, five. Whatever happened before that looks like a zigzag A, B, right? Um, and there are only basically two five wave moves to the downside in a bear market, in a, in a correction. And we've seen one of them, but we haven't seen the other one, right? Uh, and if a recession is to happen, I, I don't think you're going to see a tiny little move down. I think you're going to see a proper move down. Um, and also, I think that what happened here at the beginning was also just a very very small move due to, well, it basically just launching around the same time that COVID happened. It basically launched at the perfect time. If, if, if you, if you want my opinion, I think it did. Uh, Solana launched a few years after it was created, I believe. Um, and I do believe it created an AB pattern, ABC before a D wave explosion of basically over 30,000%. So I, I would definitely be buying up Solana if it crashes to $5 because you'd expect a 30,000% 30, 
8,000% increase, which could take it to about $1,700, right? So for me, that that's a good one. But we still need to see that move down. And for me to assume that this is something other than that, it, it just doesn't make sense. Because after a C wave move, five wave move for C, you get a you get a zigzag up for D, um, not a continuous move up because a C wave is not a, a complete correction. I mean, a five wave move is not a complete correction. Uh, there's no other way to explain this particular chart, and I think that this is spot on. When it comes to BNB, this is the alternative count to the chart that I posted yesterday right? The first move down was so sharp that it had to be counted as a wave A because every other wave after that counts, seems to fall in line with the idea that we had a B, C, D. And then I said E could be the floor at $183. Except there's a bit of a problem with that count. And we haven't seen a recession yet. So is that going to affect B and B as well? Probably, right? Will it affect it as much as, you know, other cryptos? Well, it still would have been quite a substantial move down from the all-time highs of about 80%. If, even if it does come back to the previous fourth wave of wave three of the previous move at about $118. And that would mean that E-Wave expanded in what appears to be a weak five-wave move. Uh, these patterns aren't always the clearest, so I thought I'd have an alternative count. Uh, two counts only, one for bull and one for slightly, a little bit less bullish. So we are still move, looking for a move up, but if it did come down to this level, we would be looking at slightly less than 20,000. Uh, you'd be looking at at least 10,000, probably around 12,000. But that's not the point. The point is that the count seems okay, except five wave moves can be ongoing. And when patterns don't look as they should in a bear type scenario, like this first move up is not exactly a very straightforward looking move. And I did have to make some trade-offs for the bullish version, which I kind of now changed to a, a different count, which is probably the only other count you could have uh, thinking that it's probably just a way four and then we just need one more move down a zigzag down um, before it completes right so that being said I do believe that we are going into a, another bear and there's three reasons why I believe this is the case three pieces of confirmation that I can use as a trader as well as an investor but in this case it would be more of a trader thing so the first is the waves right an a an a b c d e not the best looking count for a wave count but there are a couple of other things I can use right so first of all we have the candle pattern at the highs which is an evening star candle pattern we have a shooting star followed by a very long red bearish candle to the downside, which is a confirmation for the evening star pattern. This is pretty cool because it also lines up with the golden cross, right? Not so much on the daily, but on the four hour, we had a golden cross where the 50 period moving average crossed over the 200 for the first time since the uptrend started back down here and that's where it basically found resistance not that long ago uh, a few hours ago right so to me that there you know indicates that this is a corrective portion that you know he's probably got limited upside uh, I believe it's an A, B, C. Now, if it's not an A, B, C, it's an A, B, C, D, E pattern. So from this point on, we just have to wait to see how it goes, but I'm sure anyway. 
right? We also tag the 0.618 if you measure. Uh, I'll just show you this one quickly. You've probably seen it before. If you take a fib from the top to the low, we hit the 0.618. So we've got four things. One is the wave count. Two is the, you know, the evening star candle pattern. Three, we have, you know, the golden cross, 50 period moving average crossing over on the four hour. Uh, and then we have the 0.618 uh, retracement, which doesn't necessarily mean much in this scenario, but it's still important because people are looking at that. So a bunch of confluence there. Hopefully you found this video interesting and informative. Thanks for watching.